today we are going to basically see about back and yak libraries okay that is there in your syllabus there are different types of genomic libraries cospin libraries are there cdna libraries are there many many different types but uh, we will focus more on back and yak libraries so first of all what is a genomic library okay and the procedure to construct a genomic library uh, as a general step okay a genomic library is a set of recombinant clones so these are your recombinant clones uh, that contain the entire dna present in an individual organism so genomic as i have told it's the entire dna so your entire dna when it is stored up in clones that is called your genomic library in very simple terms for example an e coli genomic library contains all the e coli genes so any desired gene can be withdrawn from the library and studied so your uh, if it is the library of e coli all the dna will be present over here in these clones part by part fragment by fragment will be present here so whichever is your gene of uh, interest you can select that clone and study it Genomic libraries can be retained for many years and propagated so that copies can be sent from research group to research group. So once you have created a library, it can be used again and again. It can be, uh, you know, the copies can be made again and again. Okay, just like from your library, you can take a book. If one single book is kept there, also you can take it out, make Xerox copies, and give it to all your friends, right? With from one copy itself. So that is how these genomic libraries also work. You have one genomic library for one organism. You can make multiple copies of it and use it, you know, for such long time. You check out your library; such old books will be there, right? Same way. So many. Uh, this uh, genomic library is the same way. Okay. So genomic libraries are prepared by purifying the total cell DNA and then making a partial digest, restriction digest. Okay, so purification part or isolation part we have studied, right? In the video also I showed you how you get the DNA of your interest. So you have your human DNA, you cleave it or cut it with restriction nucleus, you get small, small, small pieces over here. Then that can be cloned into suitable vectors. Cloning is nothing but joining. So you have your uh, a suitable vector. It could be a cosmid. Cosmid, we get it from bacteriophage. Okay, we're not going to study that in our syllabus. If required, I'll mention it later. But uh, we'll be knowing about back and yak. So you clone it into the, your uh, uh, DNA molecules. Then such recombinant vectors are transformed into suitable host cells. You're going to put it into host cells. These host cells could be E. coli. These host cells could be yeast, whichever. So you're going to put it inside your host cell. And they are cultured in suitable selective medium for recombinant vectors. So some of these clones will not have your DNA of interest. So you put these uh, hosts into selectable media so that um, whatever has transformed will be selected and the rest which are not transformed will not be able to grow in that media. Selected clones are screened for specific genes and they are labeled and maintained as library. So this is general genomic library. Next. What is BAC? I'll go through this very quickly because we already know what is BAC. BACs are bacterial artificial chromosomes. Okay, register that in your mind. Bacterial artificial chromosomes or BAC cloning technology was developed in the early 1990s and quickly gained popularity. This technology was used in applications for genomic analysis that included large scale physical mapping and genomic sequencing. Now, physical mapping and genomic sequencing we will uh, be learning in the coming classes. Okay, don't worry about that. Back vectors can accommodate DNA inserts up to 300 KB. Now, this is an important point that you should remember. So, these are small, small things that uh, will differentiate back from yak. Okay, so uh, back, remember, it can take up DNA inserts up to 300 KB. What is this DNA insert in the small P circle? The size will be 300 KB. Maximum other than a back. Okay. Uh, excuse my Tamil. Uh, okay. So this small pieces will be of size 300 KB maximum. And you can put it over here in the clone. That is the size limit for back. Back vectors are derived from F factor of E. coli. Uh, basically, E. coli bacteria is there. No? From that, you're going to get the plasmid, which has an F factor. What is this F factor? It is the fertility factor. This fertility factor contains the genes required for the transfer or conjugation. The conjugation, I think, 12th standard lellum we have studied. Okay, one bacteria is there, another bacteria is there. This bacteria has a particular plasmid in it. These two bacteria come together. This bacteria will transfer the 
part of some part of DNA to this one. That kind of transfer is called conjugation. Sorry for using my hands, but I don't have anything else right now. So transfer of genes from one bacteria to another is called conjugation. But in the bacteria, yar help panra to transfer from this to this. It is something called this F factor present in that plasmid. Okay. The F factor no naturally occurs as a 100 kilobase molecule. Okay, 100 kb molecule. Back vectors contain the minimal sequences needed for autonomous replication, copy number control, and partitioning of the plasmid. We'll see it in the coming slide. So the recombinant back vectors also contain an antibiotic resistant gene. In this case, you can see AMPR. This is nothing but this back vector is resistant to ampicillin antibiotic. So if you put this back vector into a media containing ampicillin, this will easily grow. Why? Because it's resistant to this ampicillin uh, antibiotic. Okay. So that in addition to the blue white color selection system, we'll see about it in the next um, slide. The multiple cloning cassette in the back vector has sites for a dozen of frequently used restriction enzymes, including but not restricted to ECOR1, HINT2, NOT1, BAMH1, SPH1. So uh, in this, there will be multiple restriction enzyme sites. Okay, So not just for one restriction enzyme, different restriction sites will be there in it. So this is a consolidated picture for you. Mm. If you look at this, this is the representation diagram for back. As I've told you, there uh, in the last class itself, I told you there will be an origin of replication in a vector, ORI, which allows for the replication in bacteria. Then you have your PAR, PAR or F plasmid PAR genes. These are the ones. This is that F plasmid part. Okay, so these are the genes that will help in segregating the back evenly between daughter cells when the cells are multiplying no when you put these back vector into a host cell so that host cell will multiply so this f plasmid part will make sure that equally back vector is also distributed so nuclear is uh, dividing same way back vector will also equally divide into daughter and when these daughter cells uh, are multiplying then in amongst that also it will be equally uh, multiplied so that helps in the even segregation of the back into daughter cells then next you have uh, cmr cmr is nothing but your chloramphenicol antibiotic okay so this can be different in different backs somewhere we can see ampicillin resistance somewhere we can see chloramphenicol resistance so whatever this is this is an antibiotic resistance gene that is present last but not the least it will also have a cloning site this cloning site will also have something called a lag Z gene. Okay, this is the one which will help us to identify whether a foreign DNA has been inserted or not. So what will happen is when you treat it with some restriction endonuclease, for example, eco R1 you are putting into this, eco R1 will go and cut at the specific site. And where is it cutting? It is cutting just in between the lag Z. So what will happen after it has cut the new DNA or the fragment of dna that we have to clone will come and join over here so what will happen this lag z gene will become non-functional if lag z gene is non-functional it will not be producing beta galactosidase okay this thing we'll learn in detail in the next slides so back you have learned how to create a back library for library construction initially genome whose li a library has to be prepared is selected so whose library do you want do you want human do you want mouse do you want monkey do you want a plant's genome whatever it is you select that genome okay and you get the genome of interest okay this is your genome of interest the genome of interest is treated with suitable restriction enzyme which is capable of producing dna fragments so this genome of interest will be treated with an enzyme that will cut it at specific portion and you will get small small pieces of dna fragments similarly back is also treated with the same restriction enzyme here you have your back okay so whatever enzyme you're using over here for example you are using hind2 restriction enzyme for cutting the bacteria plasmid also you will use the hind2 bacteria uh, restriction enzyme so what these two will have the same kind of sticky ends so when you combine them they will easily join up and you will get a cloned back okay then in the next stage these dna fragments and open back this is the open back dna fragment open back 
are mixed in the presence of enzyme DNA ligase. So you add ligase and these two are joined for the formation of recombinant vector. After suitable time interval, you'll give some time for these two to clone together. Okay, the recombinant vector with uh, DNA fragments is transformed. Transformed is nothing but uh, you will be transferring it into a suitable host to E. coli with electroporation method. Now, I'm not going into detail how to create uh, competent cells. I think you have learned it. Okay, competent cells are nothing but host cells that are ready to accept new DNA. So what you will do is you tra uh, treat these cells with calcium chloride. You do some uh, heat and cold treatments to it. You uh, do electroporation that is electrical charges are passed through it so what happens is these host DNA you know they'll become more receptive okay they'll become more receptive to the foreign DNA so this will open up and your back is inserted into this okay so that is what is transformation now how do you select whether your back has gone inside this or not mm -hmm.